Hi everybody, in this video we'll be covering MTLS which stands for Mutual TLS from a pen test point of view. We'll be going through what MTLS is and we'll also be looking at a way through which it can be bypassed. Now MTLS is quite an important topic and before we move on with this video you might want to find a reason as to why uh, this video deserves your attention. So I'll just give you a quick example. So when it comes to multiple services that are communicating with each other in a complex architecture a trust needs to be established between those services that need to actually communicate with each other now how do you establish the trust now there are multiple ways but this is quite a way which has come forward and this is actually quite effective so this is actually a way of authenticating two services uh, with each other so that a trust can be established between them. But before we move on with MTLS, do you actually know how a TLS handshake works? Because if you do not know, explaining MTLS would be quite difficult. So if you know, you can skip uh, to the latter part of the video. But if you do not know, you can uh, watch the remaining part. So let's just say that you want to communicate or you want to uh, navigate or surf through a website. So let's just say that you want to navigate to google.com or any other website. So what do you think actually happens? So this is a general overview of what happens when you try to communicate or access a website. So let's just say you are the user over here and this is the website that you are trying to access. So first of all, a TCP handshake occurs. So in this, what happens is you send a sync, the server sends a SYNAC and then you send an acknowledgement. So this is where TCP, a, a TCP connection has been established. Now a TLS handshake has to occur uh, when you are on HTTPS. But so what happens is the client or the browser would send in a client hello message the server would send a hello message and a certificate. So the certificate tells that um, the certificate is a way in which the browser can know that the server is actually the server which you are trying to communicate with. So this is done by the browser itself through the certificate that the server would send in. So this is the step wherein mutual TLS comes into play and we'll be looking into it later on. So this is a normal TLS handshake that is occurring. Once this has been verified that the server that you're trying to communicate with is legitimate and the one in which, and is ex exactly the one that you want to communicate with, there are a few other things that they agree upon. For example, the ciphers and other things, and then a, TC, a TLS handshake is completed and you can access the website. So this is in general, uh what exactly happens so let's just say that you are in an architecture where there are hundreds of microservices that are communicating with each other but out of those let's take into account only two services let's just say that this is service one this is service two and service one wants to validate that the service two is actually legitimate legitimate so one way that we saw uh could could be possible is through certificates as it happens in a TLS handshake. So the server would send in its certificate. So what would be happen in the next step? The client would actually verify the legitimacy of the certificate. So it will see its domain name and who issued the certificate for that service. And then it will actually see if it is actually valid, uh, if it is actually valid. If it is, the communication will occur. Otherwise, it would be discarded. But in a mutual TLS, now this is the interesting part. In mutual TLS, the server or the service 2 has actually authenticated itself to service 1. But now it is the time of service 1 to authenticate itself to service 2. So how can it do so? Again, through the help of a certificate. Now, this is the certificate that the service A will send it to service B and the service B will actually validate if it is correct. If it is, 
a connection has been established because they both have been mutually authenticated and then they can actually communicate with each other so where is where do you think can a problem occur so he, since let's just say that you are the client here and this is the server now you cannot control this certificate right because this is coming directly from the server but as a client you let's just say that you are a rogue client and this is a fake uh, you are acting as a fake client so what you can do is you can send in a fake certificate now depending upon the parser or the logic in which the certificate is checked you could be potentially able to bypass it how by sending in a fake certificate and is that possible yes it is possible the term is called self-signed certificate so generally when it comes to certificates these certificates are issued by certificate uh, certificate authorities and there are quite a lot of them for example godaddy let's encrypt and others but let's just say that the server does not exactly validate all the contents of the certificate and it just checks checks the domain name of the certificate the domain name in the certificate so what you can do is you can create your own certificate and send it to the server and um, let's just say that the server server code is vulnerable you can actually establish a connection between the two so let's just see how it is possible so here I will be using the open SSL command line utility. I will be generating a key because a key is required when you try to generate a certificate. The, uh, and here the certificate that is accepted by most of the services is X509 because that's the standard. The certificate would be valid for 365 days and the certificate would be called certificate.pem. If I hit enter, it would ask me a couple of things. So country name let's just say India and for India you need a two letter code and it is I think India IN let's just it asks for the state name so you can just enter anything locality here is the important part so let's just say that you are trying to uh, forge of invalid certificate right so you might need you might want to write the name of the organization which you are forging a certificate for so let's just say fake or legitimate company and let's just say that this was the name of the client here itself and there is an organizational unit that sits below the organization name so you might also want to find out now you can easily find it out by searching on the web or just looking at some of the certificates that this client would send in to the server so it's it's not a tough job you can easily find it out so section let's just say for the sake of it section one and there is the common name so generally common name would be the domain name of this uh, client so here what we saw was client123 so we will be writing in uh, let's just say client123 and email address you can skip this part out and as you can see we have two things the key and the certificate so now we have successfully generated a fake self-signed certificate and we can use this to send it to the server itself so if you want to find out uh, the contents of this you can easily use open ssl x509 text in certificate.pem and here you will see that this is valid till 2024 it is encrypted with SHA-256 and here as you can see these are the details that we had entered now how do you find out that it is a self-signed certificate now the issuer and the subject would be the same as you can see right here so this is how you find out that a certificate is self-signed or not I hope this was of some value to you. Thank you.